quick little moan. So, the other day, I went out for the first time in a long, 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 long time. For the most part, I'm not really too sure why I haven't been going out. I think most of it has to do with laziness, to be completely honest. And obviously, I've had a lot to do. I haven't really had time to go out and get kind of buck wild. So I've kind of, you know, purposely been leaving the outdoor life to like, you know, for another time, right? It is what it is. Finally got out, had a good time, but it was a bit of an interesting experience because I think I had a bit of a, you know, I had a bit of a, a revelation. So I decided to go out and test the waters and go to a new club that I haven't been to before called 60 Dock Road. It's this club by a former club in London that was really amazing in Tottenham called The Cause. They've now got two locations. They've got this place called 60 Dock Road that's near the Canning Townish type area in East London. And then they've got this other venue in Hackney Wick which um, I forgot the name of it, but it's basically, you know, this it's two different type of clubs. There's one that's got an outdoor space, one that doesn't have an outdoor space for the most part in, in parts of London. So whatever. So the 60 Dock Road place is a place where they usually have the longer late night type of events because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. You can kind of get, a, you can kind of get away with a lot more over there. And I haven't been there yet, just yet. So I decided to go there for a night called Adonis, which is primarily a gay, queer, LGBTQ forward party, which you can tell straight away by checking out the Instagram, right? You kind of get the vibe of what they're about from their logo and the Instagram and stuff. But in general, they usually have some really interesting and fresh bookings. That's the main reason why I want to go, right? A lot of DJs that I like, and um, specifically this time around, they had this DJ called Cormac, um, who's one of my favorite disco DJs to go and listen to. He was going to play there, and usually he's, you know, he's a kind of, you know, he's a bit of a big deal. He plays at a lot of like really famous clubs around the world. So to see him play at this kind of like, you know, a club that's like a little bit below maybe his level was quite cool because it's quite nice to see these bigger DJs get a chance to play at smaller clubs because usually they like that experience and they kind of, you know, take it um, with both hands and kind of really show out. So I was really looking forward to seeing Cromac perform at 60 Dock Road. So I decided to venture out and, you know, maybe it was the wrong type of place to go to that late at night because i did decide very late at night maybe like 2 a.m that i was going to go there the previous um plan was to go to fold for the mala june tonight i went to go see d dan and dj tool play um and hype activists and stuff but late you know i made a last minute change i was like you know what fuck fold i go there all the fucking time it's a bit boring um let me switch it up a little bit and go somewhere else so let's go to this next place i go to the next place i decided to jump in an uber all good no problem arrive at the place a bit quicker than i thought i would arrive there and it's not really exactly on the map where it should be but i arrived there it's all well and good and then as soon as i get there i probably should have realized like again this is, doesn't mean anything really in the big scheme of things but i think i should have realized that the night wasn't gonna go well from my first interaction as i pulled up to the club because 60 dock road the, the the kind of the street it's on it kind of feel because everyone's around because i didn't realize because it's the first time i've been there i didn't realize that everyone standing around was either waiting for an uber to get there or they were probably waiting for their dealers to come and deliver them their drugs or something i don't know so I, so i didn't know where the entrance was so i r jumped out of uber and i was like to some random girl that was coming out i was like oh hey is this 60 dock road like you know trying to point behind where she was going or is it over there like i didn't really know where i was and she kind of gave me like a bit of a frosty response. Like, leave me alone. I, yeah, of course it's over there kind of thing. And that immediately put me in like in a bad space. I was like, oh, fucking hell. Like, what the hell's going on? I just got here and I'm already vibing out people, right? <laughs> like, okay, cool. Well, okay, no worries. It is what it is. Everyone's out to think what they think. So I continue to walk in. I continue to walk in to go to the place. And as soon as I get to the to NID where the doors were, They've got this fucking airport terminal security thing. We have to kind of snake around and maybe it's just me and maybe I'm just too spoiled from going to all these other cool, you know, European cities and partying in places where they don't search you like you're fucking going through the airport. But that sort of stuff really bums me out. I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, I'm going to have to take off my bag, fucking spread myself like a starfish. Like, it's just another little bit of a vibe killer. Anyway, we go through that. The security that are doing it are pretty cool. No problem. Um, you know, I know where to put my things. All, all well and good. I get to the point where I'm going to get the tickets and then it's a second sign that this night isn't going to go well. As I pull up to the place, I'm going to get the tickets. You know me. I want to be fun. I want to be ha ha he he. So the guy at the, <laughs> at the ticket boofing is like looking down at his phone. And, and the booth is like a little bit high up. 
And no, and I'm not a short guy, but it's a little bit high up. It's not like low. It's not like eye level. It's a bit high up. So you kind of look at, so you kind of feel like you're in school looking up at the headmaster. So I rock up to the to the little table. I'm like, hey, hey, could I get a, um, a ticket, please? And then uh, as I'm saying that, because it's like, I don't know, half two, and they were, I think, closing, or I think last century was at three or something, I tried to make a joke about, oh, um, I just got here in time or something along those lines, right? Maybe it didn't come out right. I don't know. Maybe it's the weather. Maybe it's the way I speak. Maybe it's my breath. Who knows? But that guy did not, did not respond <laughs> in the slightest to my attempt to kind of ha ha he he break the ice or make a joke in that weird little, you know, moment where he was trying to get the ticket thing up. Nah, nothing. He's like, he's like, yeah. And then that was it. And then he said, oh, can you give me your phone? Can you hand me your phone? I got the phone. I gave the phone to him. And then he just like put my put the sticker on there where you meant to get a little sticker, right? You see that little Adonis sticker down the back so you can cover the camera. And then he just handed me back my phone. Or just didn't hand back my phone. He just pushed it back towards my direction. And I said, oh, um, is there no wristband or anything? He's like, no. And then just continued looking back down on the phone again. And I was like, oh, my God. I got kind of vibed out at the front before i walked in when i asked that girl hey is that the place and she reacted like i tried to fucking jump inside her skirt cool then when i go to the kid door to go and pay for the ticket the guy then like couldn't give a fuck if i was there or not and then decided you know to kind of send me on my way then i'm kind of walking through the place to go to 60 dock road and it's a very expansive space it's a really amazing space to be fair um unfortunately for us in london most likely because 60 dock roads become quite popular and everyone goes there to club as per usual gentr the gentrification hammer will come you know over that place very very quickly if it hasn't already and i'm sure in a couple of years it will all be turned into fucking you know um pathetic glass and still you know fucking flats that nobody needs but right now it's a very cool space there's loads of little corners to sit around in. Um, there's loads of little rooms to go in. It's a really expansive place. But it's huge, huge place. So you walk in and there's this area before you get to the club where everyone's sort of sitting around. It's all like a smoking area. It's like got like, there's like benches and chairs everywhere. And because it's like a gay night, you know, there's loads of dudes around and everybody's looking at everyone. Like it's, because that's what usually happens. It's like everybody's just like, they're on it. They're ready to go. Whatever action, they're ready to go. But it's also a little bit like, high schoolish you kind of feel a little bit awkward because you're not too sure if they're checking you out they're judging you they're like you know <laughs> they're saying mean things about you you don't know so you're walking in so you walk in the gate and it's like this big space where everyone's in front like you know looking cool and shit and here i am clumping along right <laughs> trying to find my way and everyone's just staring at me or like whoever's just walked in not just me everybody now I'm thinking, oh man, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. This is not going to go well. So anyway, I think, you know what, whatever, dumb, no problem. Let me head, let me do my usual, head straight to the flipping toilets, you know, dick, have a little dick dack, have a little dad dat, and then I'll, re I'll be ready in my mood. So I went to the toilets, and then of course I get into the toilets and, you know, the toilets is just, it's fucking, it's fucking hot -y heaven. Do you know what I mean? If you're into dudes, the toilet was like just full, wall to wall of like the most ripped jack guys I've ever seen in my entire life. Like everybody just looked like, everybody looked like they just finished their CrossFit class that night and they went straight to the clubs. People were just like tops off, jacked, ready to go, right? You walk into there. So, and again, they, they probably all been, they all been out way longer than I have as well. Let's keep that in mind. So I'm walking into a club at like half two when these guys have been here since like 10 a.m., so I'm right, you know, like, I'm, it's, it's the wrong time. So I get in there and everyone's like, Arr! and I'm like, just Arr! trying to get my, my myself, my bearings in. I have my little dick, 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 dock. But, you know, that energy is a bit weird to get into because everyone's up and I'm like still just, you know, I've just arrived. I've probably had a couple fucking, you know, beers on the way there, but nothing crazy. Then I get to the dance floor and it's amazing. The dance floor is fucking amazing. Like, honestly, I hear Cormac playing for maybe the last half an hour or 45 minutes and he absolutely kills it. And it legitimately reminded me of some of the best nights I've had in other parts of Europe that other people like, like Berlin and stuff. It literally reminded me of that. Like, it was so cool to be in a London club and see people dancing. 
everywhere, like wall to wall. No one on their phone, no one fucking acting too stush, acting too cool. Everyone just going for it, throwing shapes, dancing, amazing. You had all these um, amazing uh, fucking, what, what do you call it? Um, people dancing on the on the tables next to the DJ booth, which you don't see ever happening in London because everyone here is so like shy and scared about this sort of stuff and security are told you to come and jump down the tables. But you see all these amazing looking guys and girls and whatever on these on the DJ booth dancing around. And 60 Dock Road has this amazing kind of little space behind the DJ booth. It's kind of like a little, it's kind of like a little like dance area, but also seating, but also you can jump up and dance basically on the DJ booth type of thing. It's flipping amazing, the little space they've got. There's a massive disco ball that kind of hangs really low. Like, it's super sick. Amazing. Great dance floor. Everywhere. Everything was amazing. I loved it, right? I really, really loved it. And then you had, like, a couple flipping... You had a couple flipping um, really amazing looking flipping um, drag queens dancing on either end of the table that Cormac was, da- was like, DJing on. That was absolutely amazing to see. So, all of that, fantastic, great. Loved it. But... I just wasn't getting there. Like, everything was amazing. The um, atmosphere, the people. I just wasn't able to kind of rev up. I wasn't able to rev up. And after a while, you know, I I kept trying to chase it by going to the toilets and getting my little dig, dig, tack, tack on. But that also wasn't working. So I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm experienced enough now where I know if you keep chasing this, you know, if you keep chasing this moment, it's just never going to happen. And then you're just going to be in a weird space by the time six o'clock comes around. So I just press pause at like four half four i just pressed pause i was like you know what i'm gonna press pause i'm done now and then i was done i was just kind of observing it as i can you know as i could i was just observing it like an observer you know just standing around and then i immediately felt like you know what i shouldn't be here (laughs) you know now i kind of get it i shouldn't be here because i'm not partaking in all the fun that these guys are having clearly and I'm just taking up space because I'm not really enjoying, I'm not really dancing or having a good time. So why the hell am I here? I should go somewhere else, really and truly. And that's when I actually, embarrassingly enough, understood now, for real, why gays, queers and people from that LGBTQ community, especially in London, why they get so annoyed when the cis people like myself go to their spaces. Because we take up space, we take up room, whatever it may be, and I'm pretty sure we just emanate a vibe of just not being congruent to what they're doing. We're not clocked in. Like, because I go to a lot of these parties anyway, so I'm not freaked out by anything that I'm seeing, right? It's not, so I'm not like I'm going, oh my God. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with everything going around, but I'm sure even me being cool, I still emanate, I still kind of emit a vibe of something. Do you know what I mean? That I'm not really part of their community or part of their crew just you can't help but just admit that it's just gonna come off of you right um that's why fucking gay does probably exist and shit so it just didn't click so i just realized you know what i'm taking up space i shouldn't really be here you know what i mean that's when i kind of realized what's going on i was like oh this doesn't make no sense but then when i kind of got past all that i was already there you know i'm not gonna leave now I just flipping got there i was like you know what i've also realized i'm kind of getting bored of it as well a little bit because I was in a space where I was surrounded by people who were really enjoying themselves and having a time of their lives. And I got to say, in London now, if you're from that community or if you're a part of that community, there's no better time to club or probably there's no better city in, the, in, in Europe with the exception of maybe, you know, Berlin and Amsterdam where you can flip in party at all these amazing qu- gay, queer, LGBTQ plus friendly events. We have some of the best, I say that, some of the best in Europe, maybe even the world right now. It's probably the best moment ever. We ca- It's a great renaissance, all those events, because they've, they, they're making these events, you know, they're super focused and catered to their community. They don't give a fuck about anybody else. They're just trying to talk to their people. They book their people. They promote it to their people. And that's it. Some of these events... They don't even put them up on resident advisor. Some of these events are like word of mouth. Like I've I've seen certain group chat conversations where people are like, hey, don't post about this on Instagram. Don't share this anywhere. Don't tag your locations. Like some of these events are like proper like needs to know basis because they don't want to let any outside forces that are not don't get it to be in there and ruin the mood. So that's how much um 
you know, that's how much atten- that's how much care is being given to this, right? That's how much attention to detail is going into creating these amazing nights because people know in London, by and large, the club scene is shit. It's fucking terrible. Don't let anybody lie to you. Fold is the only decent club we have and Fold isn't like, you know, the, go- the greatest club in the world. It's the only good club we have and everybody puts on a pedestal because it's the only decent one we have. Everything else is fucking garbage. A lot of these good DJs that are coming in and playing in London, unless they're playing in Fold and stuff, it's a waste of time, really, for the most part. Every other club they go to is a waste of time because, you know, it's not going to be open too long. The club itself is shit. It's got crazy security. Like, all of it is fucking nonsense. So, these other events that those people from that community, the gay, queer, LGBT community are doing, they're doing them in interesting spaces. They're doing them outdoors. They're doing them in like warehouse spaces and unlicensed spaces. They're booking interesting DJs. They're installing their own sound systems. They're actually, um, what's that word called? They're doing a lot of the, I guess you call it production when it comes to kind of just putting the event together and having loads of amazing, like, and even at that, even at Adonis, they had these amazing films playing on the screen, adult films. They had these amazing disco balls and art installations and amazing drag queens walking around the place and everybody dressing in amazing outfits. Oh, one thing that was interesting to say, one thing that was interesting to say with this, it was actually refreshing to go to a London nightclub listening to that type of music and seeing people who were wearing harnesses and braces and stuff, right? But they were actually functional. Because a lot of the times that you go out now in London, everybody's kind of wearing PVC and like, you know, harnesses and latex and all this malarkey. And it's just like techno cosplay, right? They just make, it's just pretend shit. It's just all these cute girls wearing this stuff that's from this very, very um, niche subculture, but they don't know nothing about it. just want to look hot. Whereas it's good to see and go to those type of nights like Adonis and see guys actually using the harness. You know what I mean? Using wrist straps, like, yeah, you know I mean, dog walking each other around the club. That was actually refreshing to see. I'm not going to lie. I was like, okay, thank God. These guys are really about that life. There's none of that fucking techno fucking cosplay shit. None of that fucking pretend. Oh, look, I like to party party. I'm going to buy an Amazon fucking strap. Nah, these guys were really using straps. No pun intended. Like straps were being used in that place. And it was refreshing to see. Refreshing to see. But it was also a really stern reminder for myself that not all raves are created equal and not all raves are for you. Sometimes it's good to just leave these things for the people that it's made for and for you to unfortunately go to my shitty, boring, drab, repetitive, nonsense, cis party. It's honestly annoying. Because, you know, I'm going to have to go to, what, Phonics again. I'm going to have to go try and make Pickle Factory work. I'm going to have to try to go to make, go, go fucking Night Tales. It's bullshit and it's terrible. So I've decided now, going forward, most likely, what I'm going to do is just have a break. I'm going to have a break until the end of the year. If I want to go out and get my race fix, like if I go to flip, if I want to go out, what I'm going to probably end up doing is going to flipping um, Pirate Studios right and gonna go do it go and dj there that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go pirate studios i'm gonna book a little session there and play my things maybe stream something and go and dj but the times of me going out and just trying to wing it and try my luck in places they're gone i'm not doing it anymore it's too crap it's too shit out there and these type of parties like adonis they're amazing they're brilliant they're fun times but they're not made for me you know, and I'm just taking up space. I'm not there in the same vibe as them. I'm arriving at half two in the morning, you know, still kind of sober, chasing a high, looking like an absolute statue in the corner of the fucking rave or an undercover cop or something like, you know what I mean? Vibing everybody out. So I'd rather not go there and ruin these people's nights and just do my own thing at Pirate. But I'm also not going to waste my money and go and get frisked like I'm at an airport and go to fucking Fabric. I'm not doing that. So I'd rather just have a strong break and just relax. That's what I'm going to do. But I do encourage you, if you are a part of that community or you do want to engage in some acts or whatever you want to do and you're looking for an alternative night to go out to, I do implore you to check out fucking adonis it was really good it was spread i think across like four rooms it was on from like nine to like 8 a.m in the morning like it was crazy like crazy and this part of east london that is in 
it's Canning Town. It's kind of like a place where I basically grew up and it's a very rundown area, but it's also very, um, it's kind of an, an, it's kind of an untapped space. Uh, it's kind of far out of place, you know, not, not near a lot of residential homes. So a lot of the complaints that, you know, um, homeowners have about noise pollution doesn't exist there. So they can go a bit crazy with the sound. Like it was really loud in there. They were, you know, they kind of were going a bit over the limit and whatnot. And I think most of it's because of where it is location wise. So it's a really fun place to go to those type of places. So I really do recommend you go check it out. But yeah, that was my epiphany when I went there. I was like, you know what? Maybe just maybe. Just maybe these parties aren't for me. That's what I came away thinking. Maybe these parties aren't for me. Maybe. But yeah, go check out um, Adonis. Those guys do flipping amazing parties. I had a great time. I just wish I came into it with a better fucking mood and I would have enjoyed it more. But hey, there it is. There it is.